right. Welcome, everyone. We are live on Facebook. My name is Jordan Bain. My guest tonight is Sophie Davis. This podcast is called Unveiling. And tonight we're going to be discussing the mysteries of birth and the process and principles of spiritual mirroring. This is a huge topic. So we only have about 45 minutes for these podcasts. So we're going to bite off as much as we can chew and maybe more and we'll see what happens. So um, again, my name is Jordan Bain, and I'm a senior guide and Kabbalah instructor in the Modern Mystery School. My guest tonight is Sophie Davis. She is a mom and a ritual master in the Modern Mystery School and a healer. And she has been doing doula work as a birth doula for several years now. I first met Sophie back in 2015 or 2016. I'm not exactly sure if it was four or five years ago. And we've been working together ever since um, in terms of mystery school work and studies and healing work and meditation and all of that. Um, tonight, we're going to discuss that and how it's related to a lot of the stuff that Sophie does in her work. So Sophie, welcome. Thank you for coming on tonight. Do you want to say a little bit about yourself and introduce you and what you do? And we'll dive right in. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Jordan. I'm so honored to be here. I'm in very good company. Um, so it is a very big topic. It is, there's, is a lot sort of intertwined and I spend a lot of time thinking about these things. So by way of introduction, I guess I will say that as a mother and as an initiate and as a doula and as a healer, I spend a lot of time sitting with and reflecting on how those things interact, interweave, are so related and how they inform each other all the time. Like I'm just learning one from the other in so many sort of beautiful and synchronous ways all the time. So um, I am a birth doula, which means, or you could say like labor assistant, birth, a birth support person. Um, I've been doing that for about a year. I've been a postpartum doula for about five years now. Um, there's doulas of all kinds. It is based in the tradition of um, sort of those wise, the wise village that surrounds you during a transition that we don't really have necessarily in our culture. Our culture sort of isolates people in a lot of ways. We have our nuclear families, maybe. We have our families of choice, we have our friends, but we don't necessarily have people who have specific wisdom to walk us through really big changes in our lives. Mm -hmm. In this case, having a baby, which is a really big deal and changes pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. I started doing postpartum work um, about five years ago, really coincided with all of the work that I was doing as an initiate because of the way that that work hones you in on what you love and hones you in on who you are and what you are here to do. And, and the process that I experienced through that kind of connected to me, connected me to just this really deep love of families going through this and how deep and, and beautiful a process it was and how deep a need there was for just extra sets of hands and loving encouragement and evidence-based knowledge on the process physiologically mentally emotionally and then spiritually so like the more i have studied the more i've seen the way all of those things interact in the way that if we bring that healing piece in that you know we as initiates are so honored to be exposed to if we bring that into any transition but specifically the process of pregnancy birth postpartum being a parent and even the way that that relates to like our own inner child and our our own process of like growing up and parenting ourselves mm -hmm. like the way that those things can can bring your healing and your experience and your and your understanding of your experience like light years ahead of what you would be able to otherwise without these tools these spiritual tools it just blows my mind all the time so yeah. Well, I mean, you just brought okay. up enough topics we can talk about for the next right. seven hours, which is amazing. Right. Um, and that's, that's a lot. So uh, before we even go into all that, I mean, any one of those we could talk about seriously for the whole episode. So how did you, let's back up just a little bit. How did you find Modern Mystery School and how, what, what was going on in your life at that time and what drew you to this work? And then maybe we can bridge that into how, <clears throat> how that relates to work that you do with mothers and families and babies coming in. Totally. 
So I got life activated on this path. Our first step usually is this, is that one-on-one -on -one session, the life activation. Um, I got life activated on New Year's Day, 2016. And at that point in my life, I was two years out from a divorce, um, single momming pretty hard. I had a job, I was like, okay, you know, but I was also really not okay in a mm. lot of ways, like so tired and, and um, so ready for a fresh start. Like a lot of the work I had started um, kind of addressing through like 12 step work, I had started addressing like my own experience of codependency and like all the toxic emotional habits that are like the natural fallout from growing up with alcoholism and mental illness. Mm -hmm. Like those were sort of my contexts of family growing up. Mm -hmm. so I had just started doing some of that work and just started seeing like, whoa, this is so much of my own stuff. Like I'm the one mm -hmm. perpetuating so many habits through no fault of our, our own, anybody who goes through that or who experiences that obviously, but it's, it's patterning that we have to unlearn. Right. So mm -hmm. the person who life activated me, I was just like, I didn't really know what it was, whatever. A lot of people don't really get it when they're first introduced to it, but I was just ready for something new. I was like, all right, I let's, let's try it. Not try anything necessarily, but like I knew that it was a piece that I needed in order to do something differently. Yeah. And um, so I made that decision. And then about two months later in March, 2016, I decided to go to the Empower Thyself class and in initi initiation. Mm. And I made that choice because I saw the person who life <clears throat> activated me, who's an extraordinary person as we know, like is a colleague of ours and um, incredible in many ways. But the thing that like got me was what I saw in her was this deep, like hard won cultivated connection to her own inner guidance mm -hmm. it's like her own sense her own connection to her higher self like we start to cultivate as we learn self sanctuary meditation and in, in um empower thyself like i saw the fruits of that in her and i had spent so i you know every day i would just look at my life and be like this is impossible how do i do this mm -hmm. how do i how do i know my next right step you know, like, how do I really know what's right for me? And I saw that in her and I wanted that. I was like, all right, cool. Sign me up, take my money. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that class, you, uh, as an, I think an apprentice, um, Kabbalah teacher at the time started, you were taught, you were introducing Kabbalah in, in the class. Mm -hmm. And there was one point where you were talking about it as something that your mind could study, something that you could really like, I don't know, not necessarily be academic about, you didn't use those words, but mm -hmm. something to study my, my whole self. It was like my head grabbed onto that. I was like, I can do that. I've been accused on many occasions of being thinky and heady. <laughs> and so like, that was my connection into it. But really my soul was like, what's that? When are we doing that? Mm. And in that moment, in that class, I just was like, cool. When does that start? And I came to the process of the universal ascension program in hermetic grade Kabbalah that's taught through the, through the mystery school, um, kind of like feeling like every day took everything I had hmm. every day. Like I was maxed out and there was no way the way I was living, would I ever be able to do more? Mm. I wanted to do so much more. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help people. I wanted to have joy. I wanted to have fun. I didn't want to be like completely just drained of my spiritual and emotional energy all the time. And we talk a lot about the way Kabbalah just really expands you and helps you bring light to your subconscious mind and ditch old patterns. And I, and, and, you know, that through that process, I kind of never looked back. Um, mm. And from there, obviously the fruits, the immediate kind of application was, was always in my own home and with my child and mm -hmm. me as a mother. And then using those tools to kind of like move myself forward in the work that I was doing as a doula. Mm -hmm. So that kind of interwoven bloomed from there. Awesome. So when you, when you 
when you got into the Kabbalah program and when you, when was it that you started really making specific career type moves towards saying, this is really my passion to work with moms and babies and families, you know, children, come, the whole process of children coming into this world, this plane, this dimension. Uh, when did, when was that shift for you? And, and what was that shift for you between I work this job, job's okay, money's whatever to like, no, I, no matter what it takes, I want to, I want to serve um, this new role. Like, can you, can you help us understand like what that looks like for you? Cause it's, it's not a, that's not an easy transition because it's a very unique way of working. This is not a nine to five job. It's not even a predictable job. You can't predict when a baby's coming in. So I'd love to hear about that. <laughs> so I first, well, I started getting inklings of it um, before I was initiated. I started getting like little pieces of it. And I think um, just, well, for example, I would be in coffee shops in Jamaica Plain, which is a neighborhood around here, and it's baby town, USA. There's just like you can't, you can't like walk anywhere without hitting a stroller. And I remember being in these cop coffee shops, like doing grown up things, and like hearing little cooing people, little tiny packages of baby around, being like, oh. And I would just like, <laughs> this is how Colt, my son, introduces me oftentimes, or he did when he was little. He'd be like, hi, this is my mom. She really loves babies. So I had this like first little inkling of like, wow, I really love this and that's okay. It doesn't have to be, you know, and so I started doing some postpartum work kind of on the side, right? What Kabbalah did in a lot of ways was confirm and open up space in myself to even trust that mm -hmm. that was the real thing that I, heaven forbid, had a gift for. Mm -hmm. and the way that Kabbalah is this like wave of energy that you that you ride through especially when you really put when you plant those seeds and you ask for the assistance and you ask for the tree of life to really show you how to manifest these things that are within you that you're starting to trust in my in my mm -hmm. case things start to come in that make it possible or another way of saying is that your consciousness kind of unloads a little bit so you can see maybe more of what's possible. Mm. So it was very soon after we, I think we started Kabbalah in October and by December I was flying down to North Carolina to do a weekend donut training as a postpartum doula. Mm. And then from there just started, you know, talking to people and it was mostly word of mouth and mostly just sort of this very beginning kind of expression that was it just felt like this very tender new expression of me trusting this thing that I was beginning to discover in me and also beginning to express it mm -hmm. it's a very childlike beautiful thing I think this happens for a lot of people through Kabbalah you sort of well I mean it's there's a lot that happens, but there's this cleansing and this opening and this trust that you then hopefully have to then dig in and maybe find your courage and say, okay, let's give this a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you, as you've progressed in your journey, you know, you become a ritual master, you've gone to healers Academy, so you can offer things, healers Academy too. You can offer all these different healing modalities at the mystery school offers and, and at the part of the overall path in the school, um, what do you see as you've also then progressed as a doula and working with families? Like, how do you, um, how do you see these things being connected in your professional life? There's a, there's a million ways to think about it and talk about it. I think one way to talk about it is the way that these healing modalities that that these these gifts of our lineage mm -hmm. really actually address the wounds of the emotional body mm -hmm. um, and the blockages in our energy system and the baggage that we carry and I don't know about 
about you, well, I kind of maybe do know a little bit about you, but what would it have been like if your parents ditched half their baggage before they had you? Yeah, it's, right? honestly, it's unimaginable because it's the really wounding that forms most people's personalities is so much of what they identify with as themselves. Yeah. I would be a totally different person. Completely different person. And you would have wasted a lot less time getting to work on your purpose. Mm -hmm. So one piece of it I really think is incredible because we all, like anybody who steps into being a parent, however it happens, whether you adopt, whether it's a total surprise, whether you've been trying for years, everybody wants to be a good parent. Everybody wants the best for this. Like most people, most people give it some thought. Most people don't always go to the depth that is available to them of like how much beautiful like healing and preparation that is available to them that then will completely affect how they parent. Mm -hmm. Long game wise. In the sort of moment of, I guess just going along the lines of like, how, how can healing, how can these tools help with this process? Mm -hmm. If you think about what it takes to have courage, what it takes to be tested, what mm -hmm. it takes to be, to experience something you've never experienced before. These are all really big things that happen through the process of pregnancy and, and birth, which people don't always think about. People are like, cool, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna have a baby, that's great. But... But to tie that back in, the way we have babies is who we are as a society, as a generation, as me, as you. There's, I mean, we're so much more than that, of course, but we're talking about the beginning of everything, of anything is yeah. so related to the rest of the thing that's going to happen. The way you begin something says a lot about how that thing's going to go. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes for myself or for many other people, like I'm not a parent, but I, I think both for parents and non-parents, life happens very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And we can often lose sight of, you know, the connection between the very young stages of our lives, the beginning stages, the, the literally conception, the gestation, you know, being in the womb, childbirth itself. And then when we come into this world, like how are all those things, the first year, even just the first year of our life from conception to being just a few months old, how do, like that sets the stage for almost everything else we experience. So, you know, this episode isn't just like a random, like, well, birth and next. Like, it's like, whoa, 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 slow down. Like birth where something's being born. That's, you know, at one point 40 years ago, I was born. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. What was going on at that time for my parents? Mm -hmm. What was going on for me in the world as I came into the world? And like you said earlier, you know, who would I be? I don't even know. I'm sure it would be something that would be a lot less struggle. There, there'd be a lot less struggle that went in. I think most people could probably say that. So I'm going to hand it back to you, but I just wanted to reflect on that both for myself and for the audience, for anyone who's watching, because there's, there's so many different components to this and it's easy to lose sight. I think for a lot of people. Really, it's easy to lose sight because it's such a common miracle, mm -hmm. but it's also a universal experience. We've all been born. Mm-hmm. We all went through that gateway even if you never have kids even if I never have another child like we all have that that one experience in common first of all mm -hmm. and we all have this experience of growing up and and then learning how to be our own parents like I was kind of touching on before and there's this there's this way that everything feeds into everything else that I have seen just to maybe just to bring it back to my own experience right Mm -hmm. So I see the way that as an initiate and as a ritual master in this lineage, I have built up a strength of character that I, don't, I would never have been able to otherwise, for one thing. Mm -hmm. And then you bring a person, any person, to the experience of birth. 
And it is so, it is, it is the most intense combination of strength and vulnerability that can ever happen to a person. Mm -hmm. That person who's giving birth, maybe their partner is there, that, that person is witnessing a moment that I think is unique. And the way that, especially people who are giving birth, I think if they had access to the full spectrum of knowledge that as an, as an initiate since walking this path that I have had to see the nuances of their own power, to see the nuances of their own vulnerability, to see the ways that they can advocate for themselves, to see the ways that they can be completely autonomous, to see the ways that they can completely surrender to the experience, mm -hmm. see the ways that their experience of themselves, and this brings it back to sort of how it's a universal experience, that, that person giving birth, that, that person's experience of that then completely sets the stage for how they interact with that little being mm. and how they hold that experience in their heart and whether it's painful or resentful or totally blissful and how that and like how that sets the stage for them as a parent and for that little being come like coming up in the world so i guess i mean you know we can talk about it a lot of different ways but like the illumination and the connection between that strength and that vulnerability and that complete surrender to an unknown process mm -hmm. can teach us so much. And the process of initiation, the process of those of, of the healing that we receive on this path does everything to even attune us to the possibility that we could learn from that, from something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people just go through it and they this is no insult to anyone who's doing birth in any way, but they just, they're just going through it yeah. just, just to get through it. And maybe it's because it's painful or maybe it's because they're afraid, or maybe it's because simply they've been told that's how it's done. Mm -hmm. This is the way we do it in our society. But you go, you do this, you get a C-section or you get induced or, or you don't, you know, depending on your belief systems around it. And, um, a lot of people I think go into birth people that I've known, people in my family, friends, um, clients, students, mm -hmm. and there's not necessarily the kind of sacred reflection or um, level of input that, you know, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's, there's more just like a, well, this is how it's done. Really? And, the, and there's, there's, this, there's the, this is how it's done, but there's also, which is fine. You know, sure. some people want to just kind of like have the experience. Great. What I've noticed through my work is the fact that it's this like unsung gem of an experience that you can mine for wisdom beyond what you could possibly imagine. Like the whole process, if you wanted to really look at it from a spiritual perspective, from the emotional, mental, the whole process, if you really want to go there, you can learn probably more. And this is what I think is really amazing about that this particular moment in a person's life, because it is kind of like the biggest transition that we have other than death. And once you bring that possibility of life in, you have to then start facing the possibility and reality of death. It's just so real. It's riskier than death. Yeah. Death and is guaranteed. <laughs> right? Birth, like you don't know how it's gonna happen. But then there's that whole aspect of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And how it's a completely unpredictable experience and how like life, if we can learn to ride those waves, if we can bring in as much knowledge and healing and understanding as possible to our own life, because we don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow in my life. It's not, you know, beyond the like total roller coaster that birth can be. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just the most peaceful, like magical loving romantic experience ever but you just don't know mm -hmm. and i think that's a really interesting thing about humans and how we deal with the unknown mm -hmm. and how we try to prepare or control or or deny and avoid like what we because it's completely unknown mm -hmm. and there's that i guess like the process 
mirrors so much of then what we actually experience in smaller doses in day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Very real big thing. But then we have all of these opportunities in our day-to-day -day lives to then practice the lessons, the, the fortitude, the prudence, the virtues that we can learn through this very big event. So we don't get a lot of events. You know, some people, their lives don't require much courage. Some people, it takes a lot of courage just to walk out their door every day. But a lot of people are like, cool, I'm going to my job, I'm gonna watch TV. Like, it's not a very real, like, like not a lot of stakes involved. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, like, this is a life and death moment every right. day. So Although a lot of people are trapped in a subconscious fear or trauma response to things they're not even aware of. Yeah. But it's not this, it's not actually in the present moment, really, yeah. the, the really high stakes thing. But I think a lot of people get wrapped up in thinking that their dramas or their dilemmas, I'm not trying to put it down at all, whatever anyone's going through in their life, um, that, are, that to, to us, it like, when we don't have context, and this goes back to context of your birth, the context of your childhood, when you don't have like balance in your vision of yourself, mm -hmm. you don't have balance in knowing yourself, then your little problems seem really big. Mm -hmm. That's maybe an easy, easy way to say it. Like we can make little problems like I got to go to work and I got to get my coffee and I got to do the things. We can make those into big things. Mm -hmm. Or you don't know what you're actually reacting to. Like you're reacting to a little thing, but we, you know, we talk about this in, in the Kabbalah all the time, but just sort of through that, those emotional processes, mm -hmm. what are you actually afraid of mm -hmm. in this moment? Are you having high anxiety because something isn't going your way today? Or is it reminding you of something else that was actually dangerous in your life or was actually traumatizing in your life? And those usually go back to our childhood yes. and the childhood experiences usually go back to the, just the first days and weeks and sometimes minutes of our lives and what happened right before that and how we came here. So this is again, not something we think about. Most people aren't walking down the street like, oh man, when I was born, blah, 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 blah. But you were born, you're all born, like you were saying. So that happens somehow. And you know, when, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say like, we've talked about how a lot of times, or I've had conversations with people who've done really deep work on this path, who have gone back in meditation, who can, who can then get to a point where they really actually remember those moments of being, an, mm -hmm. being a very young child, being a very young infant even, even like meditating on that womb space. And every person that I've talked to about that remembers something that hurt there. Some sense of not feeling safe some sense of feeling like judged or afraid or i mean and it starts right then we're just so we're such these like we land here in this physical density mm -hmm. and we're completely at the mercy of our caretakers so then i guess the 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 space that i see to work in is how do we really actually make this safe spiritually mm -hmm emotionally physically we've got it down pretty okay the u.s has you know some doesn't has have the best numbers but like physically we're doing okay with keeping birth safe mm -hmm. emotionally spiritually being loved through that process being being cared for having like space to heal what could keep you from having a positive experience we don't really have that yet. And that's where I think our tools for this path really come in. Yeah. Something that, you know, you and I had a meeting a couple of weeks ago to discuss like how we can bring these concepts together and understand these things. Something you said to me in that meeting is that if birth is done right, it can eliminate victimhood and martyrdom for mothers. And I was just like, wow, that's pretty huge. I think a lot of moms that I've worked with can really relate with that. And can you just say more about how, how, do, how does that work? Because it was a statement that really struck me. If we get birth right, we can eliminate victimhood and martyrdom for mothers. I think so. So, it's a, it's a, 
it's it's such a beautiful again it kind of goes back to that power and vulnerability thing Mm -hmm. for mothers if they have done enough self-work to know themselves well enough and we know that this is the path of know thyself so if you want to get that done this is a good way to do it if you know yourself well enough to know what you need through that process Hmm. advocate for yourself you can ask for what you need you can surround yourself with the people who make you feel safe who give you the information that you need who you know, and, and people are really starting to do this. People are really starting to advocate for themselves through birth. They're not necessarily going in as, you know, I'll do whatever I'm told and that's what will get me a good birth. That mm-hmm. doesn't usually work out. Yeah. So the, the process of like knowing yourself through that process, knowing yourself, knowing what's most important to you, you can then come at this experience of laboring and birthing a child from this place of empowerment of being like okay for example i know if i'm you know say for example i'm a person who really wants to avoid medication during my birth um okay here are all the things i'm gonna hire a doula i'm gonna do hypnobirthing i'm gonna get a ton of healing sessions i'm gonna like labor at home as long as i can And then, but I'm also going to do some work around like maybe letting go of outcomes because who really knows what, maybe I won't go into labor. Maybe, you know, there's all kinds of different things that will happen. Mm -hmm. If that person does that work, they come to an experience of saying, you know what, I really can A, advocate for, advocate for themselves and B, make the right call for themselves in the moment so that whatever happens, however the birth comes out, they don't come out on the other side being like feeling devastated, hmm. feeling like they betrayed themselves, feeling like they gave up, feeling like they failed. A lot of people, if they have a C-section, they're like, oh, I'm a failure. Hmm. It's like, really? Is that, I mean, sometimes there's plenty of medically unnecessary C-sections, but there's plenty of medically necessary ones. And I guess, If a person is giving birth and is truly connected to both their power and the complete and utter need to be taken care of in that moment and the balance of those two things, the people who give birth like that come out on the other side like, I'm good. You can't tell me what's what's right for me. I know what's right for me. You can't tell me what's real in my body. I know what's real in my body. You can't tell me the, the, you know, Or like, or I know who to ask for this information. And I've just proven to myself that I can do the hardest thing. And maybe birth isn't the hardest thing you ever do, but it's hard. It's really hard work. That's why it's called labor. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lifetime's worth of adrenaline in just a day or two. So there's something to that. (laughs) Like how many, how many times do we come through a really big situation with regret? I think like for me and, and what is, what is maybe at the root of victimhood is like, Oh, this is happening to me. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to do this where, yeah, birth can definitely feel like it's just happening to me and I don't have control. And they say, this is what I have to do right now, but it doesn't really feel right to me and all that. But like, if you are, if you are solid in yourself and know what you need, and are able to ask for that. Because I think there is a piece of it of like, maybe people giving birth or women in general, feeling like they have to do it all on their own, or they feel like they Mm. have to not ask for help, or they feel like they can't just be held through it. Mm -hmm. That's like weak or something, I don't know. Um, But that intersection, I think is what is just keep keeps coming back to me that intersection of like, how beautiful in that moment, to be so powerful, to feel those like waves of energy moving through your body. And like, if however you end up having your, like even, and even to have carried that child that Mm -hmm. whole time, to acknowledge the power within your body, to acknowledge the power that you have to bring life. Mm -hmm. And if you do that in a conscious, connected, soulful way, what's happening to you? Like what, you're the goddess here. Mm -hmm. 
And I think if that really sank in in ways for, for anyone who addressed, who like came at any situation that they were, or any challenge in their life from, in, from that way, there's no victim there. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. What would you say, Sophie? Just, I mean, everyone has their own perspective. So of course I can only ask you yours. And this is not trying to define it for anyone else, but just to offer insights and perspectives, right? What would you say from your experience as a, as a doula and working with mothers and families um, and, and especially with women, what are the biggest fears and challenges that you see um, women expecting mothers, new mothers facing? Mm -hmm. Biggest fears and challenges. The fear that nobody talks about is the fear of pain. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really um, so apt for how we kind of run most of our lives, mm -hmm. playing safe or, or avoiding things because we're afraid to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And by very nature, the process of birth, it doesn't, people, not everybody experiences the sensations as pain. But especially for somebody going into it the first time, they have no idea what to expect. And that, so there's the fear of the unknown. There's the fear of just physical pain. And then you get into, then once you're in that process, and I've seen people go through this where they're in the middle of, you know, a three day thing and they're just exhausted. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid, obviously, for their health, they're afraid for their safety, they're afraid for their baby. And it's so real. And how often do you really, how are, are you really faced with that? You know? So then the process that brings us back is to be present. Like you don't have to do the whole birth right now. You don't have to push your baby out this minute. You have to get through this minute, this wave. Mm -hmm. And then you never have to do that again. And a lot of times people, especially in early labor, there's, there's this reckoning that happens. It happens, it happens every time where like maybe the first sort of waves of, of sensation are coming, the baby's starting to come and you're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Oh, this is really, this is, this is real. This is painful. And then you kick into like active labor and it's like, oh, that's different. That's a new thing. <laughs> So it's mm. such a head game. It's this, and this is where the processes of meditation, of you know, any of these spiritual spiritual tools that we have, to just stay present, to stay in your body, to not be afraid of mm. what's coming, to have trust in the process, in the team that you've surrounded yourself with, in the, you know, in your own body, in your own heart. There's, there's, and there's always a moment happen. I've seen this every time it happened when I had my child, I remember this moment so clearly I was in the hospital. Baby was really close. I was hanging over the side of the bed. And I remember that moment being like, I don't think I can do this. Hmm. I don't, I can't do this. And there's a moment I've seen, I've heard it every time. I can't do this. And they always do one way or the other. Hmm. And how much, I guess, to, how much of a mirror is that in your own spiritual process to be brought to a moment of complete, like, surrender where you don't know if you have what it takes and you have to dig in. And that's what I, I always say in that moment. I'm like, okay, find it in your heart. You have the courage. You have the strength. You can do this. Mm -hmm. I know you can do this. You can do it however you want. You can tap out right now and call the doctor if you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or we could try, you know, X, Y, and Z to get you through this next wave, like whatever it is. And it's just so, it's such a, it's such a distilled experience. It's such a distilled moment that is so useful because how, I mean, we go through that, we go through moments like that in life when stuff gets real. We don't know if we can really handle what life is throwing at us, or we haven't even paid attention enough to see like that something's really hard. And it's that moment of kind of reckoning and, and 
finding what's actually inside of you, which is the whole process of this path. It's like discovering everything that's inside you that you didn't know was there. Yeah. Speaking of which, I would love to hear what it is that you feel through this path. And when I say this path, I mean the mystery school, but I also mean what you're doing as a doula. Mm. Um, what would you what would you say your your biggest thing is that you've learned about humanity? You know, knowing with the humility that we're always taking this subjectively because of course it's based on us, right? And and we're seeing it our way through our lens of our experience. But what would you say you've learned about humanity on this path? So much. If you had to pick one. The fact that there is some something incredibly beautiful. I guess so I get to see in real time with real physical people the spiritual principle of all of us being pieces of divinity. Shattered sparks of the one thing. If we really are each, we each have a piece within us of what God is, of what the universe is, of what, you know, and each and every person has something unique and gorgeous and completely essential. If we don't get the whole person, whole picture, if we don't have each of us in this equation and being on this path and seeing people go through something very real, I get to see a little piece of that spark of that realness because it's real you don't get to wear masks through that process you don't get to pretend you're okay when you're not okay or like you don't get to be polite Mm -hmm. and like wear your social sort of habits through a process like that Mm -hmm. so it's so that's so nourishing to me too because you know the world is what it is and this beautiful gift that I get to see is like who people really are. Hmm. Amazing. And one or two more questions. So if you could distill your advice to people, people being mothers, families, those of us who have been born, (laughs) Hopefully that's everyone watching this podcast. Um, what would you say the, the biggest um, takeaway is from birth? Mm. Birth as a metaphor for everything else. Mm. So the running joke is that you don't get an instruction manual when you bring home a baby like the baby in the instruction manual and you have to learn this whole new language and this whole new way of being. And I guess this comes back to this idea of spiritual mirroring, which like, what even is that? What is, what is a, a mirror? And when I, when I was thinking about this leading up to this conversation, I was sort of thinking about how we have clues everywhere for spiritual truth. And it's sort of like, if birth is this, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tie this together in any kind of effective way, but it's sort of like there's this, this beautiful process of discovery that happens through the process of birth and pregnancy and postpartum where you're discovering all this stuff that your body can do or like that your partner is going through and then you have this whole experience and then there's a baby and then you got to figure out how it works. And there's just these beautiful clues along the way. And it's like, I I guess when I think about what it's like to live in this world and what it's like to feel cut off from our own spirit, our own self, to be in this dense duality kind of world, if we can then look at it as like, you know what, yeah, this is definitely true, but there's like glimmers and hints and clues everywhere we look 
for like what's true and what can help us and what's beautiful. We have so much, it's like, you know, the universe or God just sort of said, okay, you guys, going to be hard, but if you look closely enough and you pay attention, you're going to see the way, you're going to see the breadcrumbs, you're going to see, you're going to figure it out, it's going to be okay. And there's this way that, you know, when you have a kid, or even just like in the process of like parenting yourself, this like, oh, this clue came in or this truth came in, or like, I got to see a beautiful sunrise today and that really filled my soul. It's like, metaphorically speaking, I guess, if I'm answering your question at all. I think you are. <laughs> there's this way that we don't get straight answers. Mm -hmm. You don't get straight answers through as, you know, being a parent. Nobody has all the answers for you. Nobody has the answers for like, how to raise your kid. There's lots of people who are making money writing books about the right way to do things. You can try it. You can try all kinds of different things, but like only you can can really learn the right way for you. I feel like that's really true for us as we walk a spiritual path. We get like one piece at a time and we get little victories and little triumphs and little beauties kind of sprinkled along the way to kind of fuel our journey. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love it. It's, and that's super hermetic in terms of our lineage. Like there's no, the truth can't really be put into words. And whatever you come to in your life is your truth is not the truth. So beautiful. Well, we are at the end of our time, Sophie. Thank you so much for being on tonight. And like we said in the beginning, in the first five minutes, you started talking. I was like, okay, <laughs> there's no way we can cover this in 45 minutes, but we did our best, I think. So <laughs> thank you all to our viewers for tuning in tonight. Again, this podcast is called Unveiling. My name is Jordan Bain. My guest tonight is Sophie Davis, and I really appreciate all of you watching. And Sophie, thank you for joining us tonight. Hope you all have a great evening. Tune in next week for more awesomeness and um, discussions about the mysteries of life. So Take care, everyone. Have a great night.